In this video here, we're going to take a look at horizontal projection. So for this chapter here on projectiles, it's important to know that we can model the motion of a projectile as a particle being acted on by a single force, which is gravity. And in this model, we will ignore the effects of air resistance and any rotational movement on the particle. And by considering the horizontal and vertical motion of the projectile separately, we can analyze the motion of the projectile. So as gravity acts vertically downwards, this means there is no force acting on the particle in the horizontal direction. So if we just summarize this here then, the horizontal motion of a projectile is modeled as having constant velocity. And what that means then, or you should recognize here, that this means A, the acceleration, is equal to zero. So in that case then, this means we can use S equals VT. So we'll see on the next page here when we just quickly recap the SUVA equations, the constant acceleration formulae, that S is equal to VT here when A equals zero. Okay, so keep this in mind here. This will be used extensively throughout this chapter here on projectiles. Now, the force due to gravity is modeled as being constant. And as a result, the vertical acceleration is constant. So if we summarize here then, the vertical motion of a projectile is modeled as having constant acceleration due to gravity. So in that case, then the acceleration here is equal to G. And don't forget then, unless a question states otherwise, we will take G to be equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. So before we look at some examples here, let's just quickly recap the SUVA equations. So before we take a look then at some examples here, you might just find it useful to recall the constant acceleration formulae, better known as the SUVA equation. So we have the following five equations here, and hopefully you are familiar with these, right? We introduced these as part of the first year material then for mechanics. So starting off then, we have V equals U plus AT, nice and straightforward. We then have S equals U plus V over 2 times by T. We then have V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. We then have S equals UT plus a half AT squared. And then finally here we have S equals VT minus a half AT squared. So as we noted on the previous page then, when we said that S is equal to VT. So that was when A equals zero, right? And the reason for that then is because if A equals zero, this part here, right, would just be equal to zero when A equals zero, okay? So as I mentioned then on the previous page, we will use this result here quite extensively throughout this chapter. Okay. So yeah, just do make a note here of these five super equations. If you don't already have them to hand, we will use these obviously quite a bit throughout this chapter here on projectiles. Okay. So there we have it. That gives everything that we need here then for our quick introduction to horizontal projection. All we're going to do now is take a look at two examples. So let's get started here then with question one. Now for question one, we're told that a particle is projected horizontally at 30 meters per second from a point H meters above horizontal ground. We're then told that it lands on the ground four seconds later. And to get us started here then with part A, all we want to find is the value of H. So we don't have to. I do think a good starting point here is to draw a quick diagram. So we've got the horizontal ground here, right? So we'll look, say something like this here. And then we have a point that's H meters above this horizontal ground. Okay, let's say that's here. And we have this particle, right, that is projected horizontally at 30 meters per second. So get something, say, like this here, 30 meters per second, like so. And this height here, then, we don't know what that is, right? That's what we're looking to find then for part A. So we'll call that H here, okay? And all together then, we'll get something that looks, say, like this here, okay? And it hits the ground then four seconds later. So this point here then is when t equals four, okay? So for part A then, we want to find the value of h. So to find the value of h then, what I'm going to do here is resolve vertically. So if we resolve vertically then, if I take downwards as being positive here, like so. So just using SUVAT here then. So for S, the displacement here. Well, that would simply be the height then, which is H here. So S equals H. Now for U, so this is the initial velocity here, but don't forget this is in the vertical sense here. Now, given that the particle is projected horizontally here, the initial velocity in the vertical sense is simply zero. 
Okay. Now for the acceleration here, A. Well, in this case here, if we're going vertically downwards, then this is under gravity. Okay, so acceleration here is G. So A equals G. And given that the question doesn't state otherwise, we'll just take this to be 9.8. Okay. And we also know that T equals 4 here. Okay. So using the information that we have to hand here, then we're going to use the following Suva equations. We're going to use then S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Okay. So altogether, then what do we have here? So S equals H here. So we have H equals UT. It's going to be zero times by four plus a half at squared. So a is equal to 9.8 times it by 9.8. And then we times it by t squared. So that's going to be four squared here, which is 16. Okay. If we simplify this here then for h, what do we get? We find that h is equal to, so zero times by four is just zero, right? We then have a half times by 16, which is 8. I've got 8 times 9.8 here. So 8 times by 9.8. All you need to do here then is just put this into your calculator. So 8 times by 9.8. What does this give us here? If you do this correctly then, what you should find is we get 78.4 here. We get 78.4 meters there for the height. Okay. So that gives us the solution to part A there. Let's just quickly box this off here then. So we can split up part A and part B. So that's part A there complete. Now for part B then, it says the horizontal distance traveled between the time the particle is projected and the time it hits the ground. So this is what we want to find, right? So the horizontal distance traveled between the time the particle is projected and the time it hits the ground. So in this case here then, all we're looking for here now is essentially just the horizontal displacement, right? If I call this x here, we're looking to find the value of x here. In other words, as I've just said, it's just the horizontal displacement. So now, if we resolve horizontally here, taking to the right to be positive, like so, then in this case here, what do we have? Well, s, that's the displacement, right, which we've just labeled as x here. So s equals x, like so. Now, for you here, so my initial velocity, well, we're given that here in the beginning of the question, right? That's 30. So ux then is equal to 30. Now, because the acceleration here will be equal to zero, so a here is equal to zero, right? What that means then is v here is also equal to 30, okay? Because it has constant velocity here. So u is equal to 30, the same is true here for the velocity, okay, the final velocity, I should say. So v equals 30, a is equal to 0, and then t again here is equal to 4, okay? So all we're going to use here then is s equals vt, okay? So use s equals vt. It's the same as s equals ut here, given that we have constant velocity, but typically this is the way that we label it, right? So speed is equal to velocity times by time here. So in that case then, S we don't know, right? That's just X here. So X is equal to VT. So V is 30 times by T, which is four. So we get 30 times by four there and 30 times by four gives us 120 there. Okay. And in this case here, this is the distance, right? We're working in meters per second. So this is 120 meters here. Okay, and there we have it. So that gives us the solution there to question one. And then finally here, we have the very last question. So question two here. And for question two, it's all that a particle is projected horizontally with a speed of u meters per second from a point that is 44.1 meters above a horizontal plane. We're then told that the particle hits the plane at a point which is at a horizontal distance of 60 meters away from the starting point. And it asks us to find the initial speed of the particle. So for question two then, again, just as we did for question one, a good starting point here is to draw a quick diagram. You don't have to, 
I do always find it helpful just to draw a quick diagram before we start the question. Okay, so we've got the horizontal plane here, or in other words, the ground, like so. Now, as we're told here in the question, right, the particle is projected horizontally with a speed of u meters per second from a point that is 44.1 meters above a horizontal plane. So this height here then, this height here then is 44.1 meters, okay? And the particle then is projected horizontally with a speed of u meters per second. So u meters per second here, like so. And all together then we'll get something that looks, say, like this, okay? So we also know that this distance here then, as we're told at the very end of the information here, the horizontal distance is 60 meters away from the starting point. So in that case then, this distance here is 60 meters, okay? So we've got our diagram then. So now let's find the initial speed of the particle. So to get us started then, what I'm gonna do here is resolve vertically, okay? So if we, if we resolve vertically here then, taking vertically downwards as positive here, and just using SUVAP, so for S then, the displacement here, well, we know that that would be 44.1, right? The vertical displacement is 44.1. We get 44.1 there. Now for U here, so the initial velocity, right? Well, in this case, this is the initial velocity for the vertical sense, right? So in that case, that's UY, which in this case here would just be zero because the particle is projected horizontally, right? So the initial velocity in the vertical sense is just zero. Now for the acceleration here, A, well, this is just due to gravity here. So due to gravity, we take A to be equal to G, which we take to be 9.8, right? Unless the question states otherwise. So A is equal to 9.8. And what else do we need here? We also need the time, right? Because if we can find the time T here, then we can just simply use S equals VT, okay? So based on the information that we have here then, we're gonna use, we're gonna use the following SUVA equation. So S equals UT plus a half AT squared, okay? So in that case then, just substituting in appropriately here, I get 44.1 is equal to ut, so that's gonna be zero times by t, so that would just be zero. And then we get a half times by a, which is 9.8, and then we times it by t squared. Okay, so we get a half times 9.8 t squared. Now, let's just simplify the right-hand side here. So 9.8 divided by two, I get 4.9. So what I've got then is 4.9 t squared is equal to 44.1, okay? So now if we divide both sides here by 4.9, what I get then is t squared is equal to nine. So t squared equals nine. Now clearly this would give me two solutions, right? Which would be t equals plus or minus three. But clearly we can't have a negative solution here for t. So in that case then, we're just gonna take the positive solution here. Okay, so in that case, t is equal to three, okay? And now because we find the value of t here, as we already mentioned, we can now use, we're gonna now use s equals vt, okay? So use s equals vt. So in that case then, what do we have here? Um, well, what I'm doing actually here is just resolving horizontally. So resolving horizontally then, taking to the right here to be positive, just to be precise here. So s then, the displacement here, the horizontal displacement anyway, is 60. S equals 60. So for U then, okay, well, this would just be U, right? So it's projected here with a speed of U. And because the acceleration here in the horizontal sense is just zero, we have constant velocity. So constant velocity, I can't speak anymore. So in that case, then U is equal to U, and the same is true for V here. Okay, so V is also equal to U. Okay. I've already mentioned that a is equal to zero. And then finally for t here, we've just solved to find that, so t equals three. 
Okay. So using S equals VT here then, S equals VT, what we get then is 60 is equal to V times by T. I'm going to get three times by U then. I get three U. And in that case then, just dividing both sides by three, we find that U is equal to 20 here. Okay. So in that case then, U is equal to 20 meters per second. Okay. And there we have it. So that gives us the solution there. The very last question, question two. And that brings the end then of this video here on horizontal projection.